Hi. How are you? you? Good to see you. Well, you, in my opinion, are one of the coolest people. Could you tell us a little bit about your role and then where you came from and how you got here at Apple? Oh, sure. I'm happy. Well, right now, I'm the Vice President of Environment Policy and Social Initiatives at Apple. Environment is my passion. We are working to implement Apple's 2030 goal, which is to be carbon neutral across all our products and everything we do. And our work here in Brazil is part of that. I also do global policy work and social initiatives. And what's really fun is those times when we get to marry the environment and our other social initiatives. I was the administrator of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency from 2009 wow. to 2013. And then in 2013, had the privilege of joining Tim Cook at Apple to do my job. Well, what's Apple's take on kind of marrying social issues with environmental issues? Environmental issues tend to affect people who have economic issues. Environmental issues tend to travel in places where if you don't have great education or there are other issues. So what, one of the things we've learned is that we have values at Apple and they're protecting the environment. They're doing more to ensure that education, a great education is available to every student. They're making our products accessible, designing them for all people. But what we're finding is really often, and of course it includes inclusion and diversity, these things that they, they cross each other's path, they intersect. And so oftentimes we can design programs to make sure we're addressing not one of our values, oh, it's great, it's for the environment, but it should also be addressing education or accessibility or sometimes many of them. A lot of people might find Apple to be really mysterious, like in a really cool way, but kind of mysterious. So is that you or what? What's, you know, the intention? I, look, I think it's all of us. When it comes to protecting the planet, that's something mm. we should be willing to share. We're not trying to keep that secret. We try to be as transparent as possible. And part of the reason for that is we want to change the way people do business and they won't do it mm. if they don't see it and understand it for themselves. People expect a lot from us. They care about the products that we make, but they also care about how they're made. So we want to make the best products, but we want them to be best for the planet. And we owe transparency to folks so that they can and see what we're doing. Sometimes it's, yeah. it's hard just because it's complicated. So, you know, we made the, the film last year with Mother Nature. Love that. <laughs> Octavia. That was great. Because we were trying to find a way for people to understand some mm -hmm. of these things we do, like what we do here in Brazil, but in a way that's accessible. So for Apple, you guys kind of taking this stand about environmentalism, has there ever been any pushback or are you all kind of steadfast and environmentalism is for everybody? First off, Apple's a worldwide company. And one of the things that unites us around the world is everybody wants clean air to breathe. Everyone wants clean water to drink. People want to make their homes and their schools in places that are safe to live in. It's been actually a really wonderful value for us. What we try to find with our work on social initiatives is to embody our values in a way that is actually very unifying, that brings mm. folks together. And the environment, as you say, has always been one. Now, climate change in particular, I think when we can do it in a way that shows folks how being nourishing and generative in terms of the environment can also be good business, that's a win. My last question is about why we're here in Brazil. Why is it important to have the private sector involved in the restoration process and then also set up industries like Symbiosis is doing? I think of trees as a renewable resource. So they have to be managed to be renewable and there are lots of claims around how they're being managed, but that's why science and measurement mm -hmm come in, technology can be really helpful there. We can see a lot without necessarily being there on the ground. But the bigger question you ask is such a good one. You know, I worked 25 years on the public sector side, government's role. Government has an extraordinarily important role to play and it can't happen without government putting in place policies that are supportive, certainly not ones that are opposite, that don't support. But the private sector is not in the business of philanthropy. The private sector is in the business of creating jobs and industry and an economy and an economic reason. And so if you want that to be the case, how can you think of a way that the private sector can invest, but invest in communities that are actually generating a financial return, but investing in the community? The community doesn't feel like you just did this project to me. We are doing this project together and it creates a job for me. That's a really important moment because when the environment becomes everybody's business, it's yeah. sustainable. I mean, that that's what we're trying to prove, that even in the private sector, there's a private sector imperative to do this work and do it right. Awesome.
if you could talk about the Restore Fund generally and what it does. The Restore Fund was our way to put together an investment and we're over $400 million and now our suppliers are joining us. So when we started the fund, our hope was we would show this can work and mm -hmm. then other companies would join. And the fund invests in projects that generate two types of return. The first is removal of carbon and we want that to be easily verifiable. If not easily, but verifiable. Yeah. We need to monitor, we need to be able to say as closely as possible that this is carbon being removed, but also a financial return so that mm -hmm. it would continue to be something where people would literally invest like mm -hmm. a fund. And it's been really successful. It'll remove a million plus tons of carbon mm -hmm. from the air very soon. And what it is, is a way for business to really find and invest in truly climate friendly projects. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Yeah. I'm so glad you made it. This is amazing.